Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Cheryl Yun. Here's a look at our top stories tonight. Tourism and business sector lawmakers urge the government to further relax COVID rules. Police seize drugs worth $100 million in two separate incidents. And China sets a space record as a cargo ship docks successfully with the Tiangong Space Station. Lawmakers have urged the government to further ease restrictions on inbound travelers. They say allowing tour group members to enter designated attractions and restaurants while holding an amber coat will not be of much help to the tourism sector. Joanna Ho reports. Under an arrangement to be implemented this month, tour group members with Amber Health Codes will be allowed to visit designated attractions and restaurants during their three-day medical surveillance. But taking to the airwaves this morning, tourism sector lawmaker Perry Yu believes the relaxation measure won't attract many tourists, as many tour operators used to treat Hong Kong as just one stop before moving on to the mainland or other Asian destinations. Speaking on another radio program, catering sector lawmaker Tommy Chang echoed Yu's sentiments, but hey, the measure as a step forward, saying it would help the restaurant trade. Executive Councillor Jeffrey Lam, who represents the business sector in the Legislative Council, urged the government to let all inbound travelers eat out during their first three days. Lam suggested setting up a specific zone in restaurants for those with the Amber Health Code. He also proposed reducing the number of PCR tests on arrival or replacing them with RAT tests. Lam noted that the city's zero plus three arrangement is misunderstood abroad. There has been a lot of misleading stories outside Hong Kong. Anybody that is um, tested positive has to go to Penny Bay. The answer is no. Uh, if they are coming from abroad, they can stay in the hotel where they are staying or staying with a friend uh, until they are tested negative. Lam urged the government to make the zero plus three arrangement clearer to people overseas. Joanna Ho, HKIBC. Health officials have detected the first case of the BF.7 variant in a person who contracted COVID. This came as new cases in Hong Kong rose to 5,723, including 392 imported infections. Another six patients died from the virus. A pediatrician has again urged parents to get their children vaccinated. He noted that a significant number of youngsters are infected each day, but less than 20% of children under three have received at least one jab. Chloe Feng reports. Speaking on a radio program this morning, Patrick Ebe of the University of Hong Kong's Pediatrics and Adolescent Medicine Department said he was saddened by the death of a 31-month-old boy who contracted COVID. The unvaccinated toddler with a high viral load died about one month ago after suffering from severe inflammation of the brain. Ip said it was not the common type of brain inflammation, but a necrotizing one which causes brain edema and a tissue death in a very short time. Since the fifth wave began, 10 children under 11 years died after contracting COVID because of their weak immunity, despite being in good health, he added. He said of the recent daily average of 5,000 infections, roughly 1,000 were minors. With less than 20 percent of children under three years single jabbed, Ebe is concerned about a possible spike in cases during winter. He urged the parents to get their children vaccinated. The 
Eve said although the BioNTech vaccine for young children is only one-tenth of an adult dose, the effect has been significant. Many parents, meanwhile, have called for the scrubbing of RAT tests for students before they go to school. But Education Secretary Christine Choi reiterated that could be possible only if their vaccination rate reaches 100 percent. Eve supported the precautionary measure as it helps early detection while mitigating transmission risks. Chloe Fong, HKIBC. Five people arrested yesterday in connection with an incident during a concert by the popular group Mirror have been granted bail. Four were detained on suspicion of fraud and allowing an object to fall from a height, and one of allowing an object to fall from a height. Four were released this afternoon and the other last night. They will have to report to police next month. Stage contractor Engineering Impact was suspected to have made false declarations about the weight of mechanical devices used during the July concert in which two dancers were injured. Police have arrested seven people and seized drugs worth $100 million in two separate incidents. This came amid a sharp drop in the number of people under 21 involved in drug crimes. Joanna Ho reports. Senior Inspector Tim Wynok told the press that following a series of raids in the past two days, six men were detained on suspicion of trafficking and possessing drugs. The 231-kilogram haul, including 183 kilograms of cannabis and 44 kilograms of cocaine, was worth $80 million. The drugs were seized in four locations, including Santin Wai Estate in Taiwan and a taxi in Mong Kok. In a separate case, Senior Inspector Ng Yen Kyu confirmed the arrest of a 24-year-old man in an industrial unit in Fotan on Thursday. A total of 13.5 kilograms of suspected crack cocaine worth about $20 million was seized from the premises. A search party also confiscated chemicals in powder and liquid form, along with other equipment, such as measuring cups and an induction cooker used for manufacturing drugs. Meanwhile, in an anti-drug event organized by the force this afternoon, Superintendent Theodora Lee of the Narcotics Bureau said about 360 people below the age of 21 were arrested for drug-related offenses in the first nine months of this year, a 20 percent drop from last year. Lee said arrests slumped significantly in March and April, when the COVID situation was the most severe. But there was a slight uptick as the pandemic situation improved. She added that cases of drugs trafficked from overseas increased after the zero plus three system came into effect. This teenager who completed a drug rehabilitation program told reporters that drugs ruined his football dream and urged people to stay away from them. Joanna Ho, HKIBC. The hospital authority has appealed to organ donors to let family members know of their decision. This was because some relatives were not aware that a donation was pledged, while others were not sure if they should make decisions on behalf of the deceased. Around 2,500 patients were waiting for an organ transplant in the first half of this year, but only 49 underwent surgery. The authority urged potential donors to think carefully and discuss with their families before reg registering on the organ donation website. Overseas, Russian troops have pulled out of Kherson, sparking off celebrations among Ukrainians in the southern city. Ukrainian flags were waved amid a chorus of patriotic songs after Moscow withdrew 30,000 soldiers and military hardware. Kherson was captured by Russia after it invaded Ukraine in February. Moscow described the withdrawal as a redeployment exercise and insists that Kherson is part of Russia following a referendum denounced by the West. Ukrainian President Vladimir Volensky said it was an historic day as his forces took up positions in the city. 
a diplomatic row has broken out between Paris and Rome as more than 200 migrants stepped foot on French soil. After arriving in the port of Toulon, the asylum seekers were taken by a bus to a centre to begin their application procedures. The group of 230 included 60 children, many of whom were unaccompanied. They were picked up at sea three weeks ago by the Ocean Viking, which was refused entry by Rome. France criticized Italy for stopping the vessel, prompting the Italian government to accuse Paris of being aggressive. The co-founder of cryptocurrency exchange FTX has seen its billion-dollar fortune wiped out in less than a week after filing for bankruptcy. As the ripple effects of the collapse continued, a local expert said although the fall is painful, it will be good for the sector. An event of this magnitude is net positive for the long-term development of crypto and blockchain industry because reckless behavior, poor risk management, not adhering to the standards that apply in the traditional um, financial markets, is not good for the long-term health of the industry. So now that this high-profile event has happened, it's imploded, there's going to be a great deal of short-term pain. But the regulators were already working very hard to come out with a regime and guidelines and guardrails, and this will accelerate that. FTX was previously the third largest cryptocurrency exchange in the world. Its founder and chief executive Sam Bankman-Fried who was previously estimated to be worth 23 billion US dollars before his fortune evaporated, resigned. US regulators are investigating to see any rules were violated. A new record has been set as the Tenzhou 5 cargo spacecraft docked with China's space station in just over two hours after launch. The cargo ship carried supplies for future manned missions to the station. Chloe Feng reports. At precisely 10.03 a.m. local time, the Long March 7 rocket blasted off from the Wenchang Satellite Launch Site on Hainan Island, carrying the unmanned Tianzhou 5 cargo spacecraft. The spacecraft with over 6.7 tons of supplies docked with the Tiangong Space Station, which currently has three astronauts on board. Another three are expected to join them soon. About 10 minutes after liftoff, Tianzhou 5 detached from the rocket and entered its designated orbit as its solar panels unfolded and started working. Launch site director Dong Hongqing announced that it was a complete success. About two hours later, the spaceship approached the space station, setting a record for the fastest docking operation. It was the first time that Chinese astronauts witnessed the docking of a cargo spacecraft as they monitored the process from the station. The cargo included propellant for the space station along with research equipment and food. Gifts were included and will be exchanged with the three-member crew that arrives early next month, marking the first time that six Chinese astronauts will live and work on the station together. Chloe Feng, HKIBC. On to the weather now. Tomorrow will start off cloudy before becoming fine and hot. Temperatures will range between 23 and 29 degrees. There will be a sunny start to the new working week. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world.
that's our main news for Saturday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Cheryl Yun. Thanks for watching. Good night.